This is agency workflows on Pantheon. Uh, before we jump into the slides, I'd love to just kind of get a quick poll. Um, who here is currently using Pantheon for a project of some sort? Okay. Uh, so who here is interested in learning more about Pantheon? Hopefully it's everyone else because this is going to be all about Pantheon. Um, great. Well, uh, my name is David Needham. I'm the Agency and Community Training Manager at Pantheon. Um, I, uh, um, I'm David Needham on GitHub and Twitter and Drupal.org and all of the other things. Uh, so please uh, feel free to tweet at me and I will be posting the slides a little bit later as well. Um, also feel free to uh, drop by our booth if you haven't already. It's a great place to ask questions and um, specifically, we have the back side of the booth, which doesn't get as much traffic, but it's a place where we can help you either set up a project, uh, run through some workflows, kind of sit with you, and actually try to consult and help you get started on Pantheon. All right, so some things about, some information about Pantheon to, to kick us off. Uh, there's hundreds of thousands of websites currently being hosted on Pantheon. Uh, in fact, it's about one in every thousand. Um, so if you, if you go out and just browse a bunch of websites, you, you, you probably have already seen a website that's been hosted on Pantheon, certainly because you're in the Drupal space, but you know, more than likely if, if you have friends that uh, visit websites, they have probably also uh, visited a Pantheon that's currently hosted on Pantheon. Uh, we also have over a thousand uh, partners, uh, partner agencies that we work with, and uh, that includes uh, people like resellers who um, go out and sell hosting to uh, in, uh, organizations and clients. It also includes agencies, uh, marketing companies, and, and other groups that create websites for, uh, for their customers. Um, yeah. uh, and, and the key, the, the way that we've really found people uh, or agencies that find success on Pantheon is in standardization. Um, I, I, the, the founders early on um, kind of had the catchphrase or said like hosting is dead uh, and, and said like Pantheon is not hosting. Um, I think Pantheon really is hosting. I think at, at the core like elastic hosting is one of the things that we offer and it even says so down in our booth. Uh, however, the, the real key takeaway, the thing that makes Pantheon special is the developer tools and the relationships that we have with developers that use Pantheon. Uh, it was created by uh, the, the, the three founders worked at agencies. Uh, they had been doing so for, for many, many years. Uh, and they, they sort of came to the conclusion at, at the time there were really three types of, of website hosting options. You know, there's something like shared hosting where maybe you are on a box somewhere that might be hosting hundreds or thousands of other websites at a time. Um, obviously, that's not a great situation. Performance is pretty poor. Uh, security is pretty poor. Uh, but it's cheap. Sometimes clients, they want cheap hosting and shared hosting is uh, the option for that. Um, kind of moving up from that, you know, you have things like VMs where you set up a virtual machine that runs all the different pieces. Uh, and that works pretty well, but you know, sometimes you, you still might want to put more than one website on there. And then you are stuck with having sort of one box that has your database and your, your file system and Apache and, and all of these pieces kind of running on one server. And uh, at, at that point, uh, by having kind of one box running the whole show, it means that you can't optimize that box. You can't optimize the operating system and all those things to, to really um, you know, be good at the database or the, the file structure. Uh, and then kind of moving up from that, if you need even more traffic, if you have you know, more demands, uh, you know, doing something like the, the last one here where you have a cluster, where you have maybe several app servers that are running PHP and things like that. Uh, you have a load balancer kind of across the top, so as you get more and more traffic, it'll automatically uh, split the traffic up and send it where it needs to go. And then you have a separate database, you have a separate uh, sort of um, backup database that's running in, you know, behind the scenes, so that if something happens with the first one, it can fail over to that one. Uh, and that's great, but this is also expensive. You also need a DevOps person who can take care of that and maintain it and kind of know uh, how, to, how to do that, as well as being on top of the security updates and, and whatnot. And as, a, as the founders were going through, they were you know, creating systems like this and, and working with different clients that had demands that would require one or the other. And, and it ended up looking kind of like this, where you have lots of clients who each demand their own system, who each want something a little bit different with different, you know, 
needs, the different pricing and all those things. And as a team, as a development team, it can become really difficult to have a standard process. You know, onboarding a developer using you know, tools and uh, logins and uh, credential and all those different things, it, it just gets to be really complicated to, to maintain and to keep up with. And they said, okay, well, there, there's gotta be a, a, a better way. There's gotta be something that we can do to make a consistent, reliable, scalable solution that doesn't require our team and other teams to go through this. So uh, they started using containers. So this was a little bit before Docker was, was really common, but we kind of created our own uh, containerization platform. And we spun up each individual piece on its own container. Uh, so if you have seen the demo downstairs, you can see kind of as you switch from the personal plan up to the business plan, you know, additional resources just kind of pop up. So if you start on the personal plan for $25 a month uh, and you realize, okay, I need, a, you know, we're, we're about to be published in some magazine or we're about to show up on some TV show or something, all you have to do is switch it to the next plan or you know, up even higher. And within a few seconds, all the resources are allocated. You don't have to think about doing any of that yourself. Uh, other benefits of having a containerized platform like this is that whenever there's a security update or anything like that, uh, not, not for Drupal, but for the server, if there's a database update, uh, uh, a uh, operating system update, an update to Apache or, or whatnot, um, you don't have to worry about that at all. Pantheon takes care of that. But we can update that behind the scenes, you know, kind of spin up one, one new container uh, that has the update, spin down the other one, and the traffic doesn't notice the difference. There's no downtime whatsoever for all this behind the scenes stuff. So these containers are kind of spun up and destroyed and updated and moved around and you don't even have to think about it. You just have to pick a plan, put your website up there, and all the pieces just kind of work together harmoni harmoniously. All right, so, so now that we've kind of looked at the overall kind of the big picture there, uh, if we dig in a little bit deeper, um, this is a, the, a, a diagram of our architecture. So it's, it's a huge, multi-tenant platform with millions and millions of containers, all these pieces working together, um, with billions of page views per month. So it can scale up you know, from like the teeny tiny little sites to individual blogs up to huge, huge publishing company websites, big university websites, uh, whatever the needs are, we can handle that. So starting at the very top, we have the edge, which is where all the caching layer lives, it's where HTTPS lives, and uh, thanks to our no, new global CDN, which we mentioned again down at the booth, uh, this lives at every point of presence. So we have over uh, 40 pops or points of presence all over the world. Uh, because of the relationship and the, the technology that we have set up with Fastly, uh, we have all of these spread out. And whenever there's an update or a change to your content, uh, the cache, the varnish cache, gets pushed out to each of these pops so that Whenever someone is visiting your website, they, it doesn't matter where the data center is. It doesn't matter that we are hosted in the United States. The traffic will all go through that one particular pop uh, that's closest to you, and you end up with very, very fast response times. Uh, as well as the, because we have the Let's Encrypt uh, with HTTPS for free on all the sites, because that's also uh, at the edge layer, at, at each pop, it means that you don't have to, authentic, you know, there's no like loop going through uh, again, back to the data center, back to anywhere else, it's all hosted in that one spot. Uh, that also includes things like caching, um, cache invalidation and things like, uh, let's say you have a new piece of content on your website, instead of having to manually clear the cache every time or set up really uh, low um, kind of max lifetimes on your cache, uh, we can set it up so that you can, uh, Whenever you publish that new piece of content, every page that has that content on it, and whether it's a, a recent news on the sidebar, whether it's your front page slideshow, whether it's the actual blog page or your search results, um, it knows behind the scenes which of those pages has that new content on it, and we can clear just those pages in the cache. So that whatever the content is that you update on the website will automatically get pushed out and be relevant to the people who are, who are viewing it. All right, uh, so kind of going down to the runtime matrix, this is where PHP and Nginx are running. Behind the scenes, this is where your, your Drupal website lives. Um, like again, all of these provisioning, all the spinning up and spinning down and updates happen behind the scenes, so you don't have to worry about all that, it just works. Uh, within that, we also have MirrorDB for the database. Uh, and again, 
if there's an update, if there's something that happens, you run a backup, all of this happens behind the scenes, and you don't have to worry too much about the configuration or, or how it's working. It just works. Uh, we also have Redis for object cache. Uh, so if you have lots of logged in traffic, Redis is what you're looking for to keep uh, that, that kind of moving along steadily. Um, and that's, uh, again, configured, just a, a click button in the interface to enable that, and you have that at your disposal. We also have solar, uh, Apache solar. So if you have uh, very high demand search needs, uh, whether you have thousands, millions of nodes or pieces of content or different things you need to look for or very particular um, like filters or um, whatever, Apache Solar is probably the way to go and that's all baked in to Pantheon. So you just, again, click the button to enable it and then you install the module and it's all configured for you. And it just works. And then last year, this is sort of the secret sauce of Pantheon. It's our, our file system. Um, this also happens uh, behind the scenes and it keeps all of your content in sync uh, between kind of the migration of moving be between like dev, test, live, and, and all those in different environments. So you don't have to worry about permissions. You don't have to worry about keeping anything in sync. It just, it just takes care of it for you between each of those different locations. All right. Um, so what this means for agencies that work with Pantheon is that they can focus on the development they can focus on the things that they actually like to do as part of their job, and they can actually get more done for their, for their clients. They can uh, fit in more time for work, they can do better QA, they can, uh, in the end, bill for things that the client actually cares about billing for instead of things that you know, they might have to do otherwise. Um, as well as, of course, in the hosting piece, you know, being super fast, extremely reliable, those are all things that, of course, clients love. So the basic idea, whether you're using Pantheon or some other system, whatever, you know, maybe you're setting up your own thing, you really wanna have at least three environments. You wanna have dev, test, or live, or maybe some people call it staging and live, or production. Uh, in this case, we, we, every website that you create on Pantheon, uh, and you can set up a sandbox for free, uh, all of them come with a dev, test, and live environment. Each of these has its own dedicated resources, its own container, so it's each separate from the others. Um, but it means that you can work in development, you can create all your code, you can add your features and functionality and, and go through the process of um, working on your site there. And then you have your live website where all of your content is actually being created. Um, so maybe the, the client is adding new blog posts, maybe people are leaving comments, maybe you have an e-commerce site where people are buying things in the store. All of those are happening in the live site while you're developing in dev. Uh, at any point, you can click a button to sync up your database and your files from live down to dev or down to test. Uh, but when you feel pretty confident about dev, you're ready to kind of deploy that. Um, instead of just deploying it straight to live, you can deploy it to a test environment. And with a click, the test environment gets uh, spun up. It copies all of the database and the files down from live into test. It copies the code and deploys that up to test so that you know exactly what's gonna happen when you actually deploy it to live. Uh, in this case, test has exactly the same resources as the live environment would, so it will, should be exactly uh, the same experience. And then test is also a great place to do lots of automated testing and QA. So if you wanted to do like load testing to make sure whatever changes that you might have made aren't gonna slow down the website or aren't gonna um, cause any sort of unexpected visual changes, uh, you can run all of those tests automatically behind the, behind the scenes in the test environment, get notifications in Slack or Jira or kind of wherever you do your work. And then when you're ready, click a button, deploy it to live, and it's good to go. Uh, so this is a little bit of what the dashboard looks like in the Pantheon interface. So uh, you can see here up at the top, we have our dev test and live environments. We also have multi-dev, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, from this interface, you can see here we have uh, a place here to connect by SFTP or Git, and we have a list of all of our commits below that. So as you're working, you can kind of look at your dashboard and get a gist for where things are at at any given point. Uh, on the sidebar, we also have information about uh, other parts of the website, so we can look and see, uh, maybe sync up our, um, that, that uh, feature I mentioned to sync up your database and files from live, you can do from the sidebar. You can also set up backups. You can set a uh, security so people have to type in a password before they can see the site. 
Uh, and then along the top here, we have information about getting more connection information. So if you want to connect directly to the database or anything like that, that's at the top. And a handy button to clear your caches. Um, at the very top here, we have a, a little thing that'll spin whenever there's a workflow happening in the background. So you can see if there's currently backups happening or a migration or um, other things that might be happening behind the scenes. You can see that because it's spinning. Uh, we also have a place here to invite other developers to your team. So you can just type in an email address, let someone have access to the site. Uh, you can choose uh, some roles to kind of dig in and give them access to certain things but not other things. Uh, and that's also um, the next one here the, under settings is where you can select someone uh, to pay for the website. You can make someone the owner. So maybe if you're a company that isn't interested in reselling hosting, you just want to let your, your client pay for it, you can go in there, you can invite a person to pay, they'll get an email where they can set up the account, put in their credit card information, and then it's good to go live. So uh, Pantheon is, is currently built on the pricing structure where everything is free to develop on, like as an agency, you can set up an account, you can set up sandboxes, get all this stuff set up and ready to go. And we don't charge a dime until you actually connect the domain, until you actually say, okay, we're ready to go live, let's actually send real traffic there. Uh, that's when we actually start, start billing. So, you know, we have agencies that start every single project on Pantheon, even if they don't know that the client's gonna choose Pantheon. So it might end up that they start a project on Pantheon, build it out, test it, use their workflow as a standard process, and then export it and, you know, take it where the client actually needs. And we're perfectly okay with that. Uh, we think uh, Pantheon pr provides an excellent, uh, excellent developer tools and workflows, and so we're okay if not every website ends up here. All right, so speaking of the workflows, uh, there's really 10 distinct sort of workflows that we identify that agencies really need to do their job well. And so these are the different sections that we're gonna be talking about today. All right, first up, you as an agency need an efficient uh, tool to start a new project. So you finally went through the process, the bidding process, you put in an RFP or, or whatever process you went through, uh, you heard back from the client, congratulations, we've decided to go with your agency, please build us a website. Okay, we're ready to get started, now what? Well, if you don't have a process in place, if you don't have scripts or whatever it is that you do to set up a project, um, it can be time consuming to kind of, before you can actually get started developing. Um, so, here's a quote from one of our current agencies that we work with. Uh, Steve said, I needed a web environment where I didn't have to manage physical or virtual servers. Uh, so this is a case where you know, if you have to manage your own server, if you have to go through the process of spinning all this up and putting up uh, the uh, dev test and live environments by yourself and setting up the scripts and all the environment variables and all those things, it can be really time consuming, uh, which is not ideal if you're wanting to actually get into the, the fun, billable development, you know, website building work. So, uh, the developer dashboard. So, in Pantheon, you just log into your website. Uh, as an agency, you can choose from a list of maybe pre-built uh, upstream, so, you know, for example, WordPress or Drupal, or a distribution of Drupal, if you'd prefer, or maybe you want your own distribution that you've created with your own preset uh, type of website that you might create. So, for example, if you're a company that makes restaurant websites, or particular nonprofit websites, or things like that, um, that could be a case where you could choose one of those, and the website just goes. You click install, it goes through and installs it, and then you're actually ready to hit the ground running and start developing. All right, the next one, sharing code between similar sites. Speaking of that whole restaurant scenario. Um, so uh, Daniel here, another one of our agency partners says, rather than helping people keep their sites running, we'll be able to concentrate on helping them make effective websites. Uh, so it's this, this idea again of, you know, with these custom upstreams that we can create, if you again have a university site where all of the departmental sites have basically the same functionality, um, you can use custom upstreams that has a starting code base that's the same, you know, Drupal core, you have all your modules, your themes, pre-configured and ready to go. You have some configuration in place to get it running. And then once you're ready to go, you, you know, go into your dashboard, you click create a new site, you choose my university, you know, starting point, whatever, click it, and then you have a website based off of that that's ready to go. Um, you might be inclined, you know, thinking about, well, you know, maybe I can already do this in Drupal, maybe I'll do like a Drupal multi-site or something like that. 
And I would caution you, because I think Drupal multi-site can be done well, but my personal experience and our, our founder's experience has been uh, Drupal multi-site sounds like a great idea, but in practice it can be really, really complicated. If all of the websites aren't identical, uh, it can be really hard to use. If you have a website that needs a little bit slightly different code or slightly different this, or you, need, you know, it gets to be really, uh, really painful to do updates for one particular piece because with Drupal multi-site, you do one update and it goes across all the sites. If one of the sites breaks unexpectedly, you have to try to pull that site out of the multi-site, which is no fun whatsoever. You have, to, you have to figure out how to pull it out of the database and all those things. Anyway, uh, the solution that Pantheon found, we, we don't have Drupal multi-site on Pantheon. What we do is things like custom upstreams, because custom upstreams will let you share that code base, but keep the repository separate, so you can say, okay, there's an update to Drupal core. I'm going to update this custom upstream, and then all of the websites that are based in the custom upstream will get a notification in the dashboard that says, hey, there's an update available, click here to apply it. You click it, and then you have that on the site. And then, I, I think we'll talk about it later, but you can also um, then automate that process. So you can apply those updates to all the sites automatically. All right, the next workflow, developing and deploying different branches in their own environments. So uh, let's go to our partner quote. On Pantheon, patch.com is running at 50 million page views and 20 million uniques a month at 99.969 .969 uptime across approximately 35 million URLs, 40 terabytes of images, 500 terabytes of video, 6 million registered users, 15 million stories, and they only have four developers. So all of that with only four developers. Uh, the reason they can do this is because we have a tool called multi-dev. Uh, multi-dev, uh, if, if, who here, real quick, has a familiarity and comfort with using Git? A little bit. Okay, so, so Pantheon's workflow is built on Git, but you don't, know, have to, you don't have to know Git to actually use it. Uh, so we have our dev test and live environments that I've already talked about. Uh, dev is sort of like the master branch for used to using Git. That's where the, the, the master lives. Uh, and then multi-dev, basically every multi-dev environment on Pantheon is a branch. So whether you're working locally in a branch or you're working in a different place uh, you know, for a new feature or some new update or something like that, uh, when you create a branch, uh, you can just click a button in, in the Pantheon environment and spin up a new environment just for that particular branch. So whether you know Git or not, you can go in there, click create a multi-dev, a new branch is created, a new environment is created uh, based on whatever uh, database and uh, files that you'd like. And then you can work just in that environment without stepping on anyone else's toes, without worrying about merge conflicts between different changes that might be happening at the same time, and really without worrying about messing up your master, without worrying about um, having the need to maybe deploy master, uh, deploy, d deploy dev up to test and live at any given point. Because what if there's an urgent security update? You know, what if you're actively developing some new feature uh, directly in dev, and there is, oh, Drupal security update, I need to apply it within the next few hours, otherwise maybe our site's gonna be hacked or something. Uh, well, if you're working in a multi-dev environment, dev is always clean, there's nothing in dev except for maybe this new security update that's just coming in. You don't have to worry about if you're deploying something that's not ready. You just test it, move it up to test, move it up to live, and you apply the update. So it makes the whole process move a lot smoother. Again, this is referred to as multi-dev. Uh, Multi-dev environments are also really cool. A, a feature I really liked about them as uh, before Pantheon when I was an agency was that I was able to work on features in each of these environments and have a URL that I could share with a client that didn't include other features or other things that we were working on. I could say, hey, here's this new slideshow feature you asked for. Is, is this how you're, you're expecting it? Oh, and, and ignore this other stuff that's broken or this other functionality that's not ready yet. It's just this particular piece. And they really appreciated that. I, I felt like it worked really well and it made us seem a little bit more professional. All right, the next workflow, optimizing infrastructure for performance. All right, the next partner quote, the cost benefits and performance enhancements were really what sold a lot of our clients. Um, so performance is one of those things where if you 
if you care about it, you want to get really particular and really dig in and really, you know, fine tune those things. Uh, if you don't care about it, you do kind of still care about it. Like, even if it's not something that your client wants to spend a lot of money and getting, you know, down to the millisecond uh, improvements, they still want their website to be fast. Uh, great thing about Pantheon is that it is just fast by default. You don't have to worry about configuring anything. We, we make a lot of assumptions when you use Pantheon so that you don't have to even think about if it's tuned the right way. Um, so Pantheon has a tune stack out of the box. It includes things like you know, varnish caching, Redis caching, really fast solar searching, uh, and, and all of those things work automatically. If you do want to get more specific, if you want to dig in and really tune the performance stuff, we do include New Relic APM Pro for free with all of our sites. So you can get notifications when your website starts to run slightly slower than usual. You can see on the chart uh, when maybe I deploy this piece of code today and all of a sudden the website is going slightly slower than it was the day before. Why is that? Well, using New Relic, you can click through and see, oh, I see this particular module is causing this website to go slightly slower because of some API call it's making. Uh, you can get really, really particular and really improve your website speed. All right, the next workflow, adding and removing new team members from a project. All right, so this is one of those things where if you're currently working on an agency with a lot, of, a lot of members, or even if you're a small agency that occasionally uses freelancers, or even if you're not an agency but you're an organization that might have freelancers that come in and help, uh, this is one area where Pantheon can be really powerful. So taking a look at another quote. I went to my project manager, manager and asked if she had scheduled dev time to start building the sandboxes for a project, and she said that she had already taken care of it herself. It was that moment of, whoa, this is real. That was my big moment. So this is one of those things where you don't have to be a technical DevOps guy to go in and grant someone access to the server. You don't have to think about, do they have too much access or too little access to uh, compromise the security of our like server infrastructure. Uh, when someone leaves, you don't have to worry about, okay, where all do they have access? Where all do I need to go through and remove their SSH key or, or whatnot? Uh, do we have to go through and change all of our passwords? Uh, it's easy to grant granular access because we have a team management system, both at the site level and on the agency level. So as an agency, you can grant access to team members um, and give them access to um, go in and actually maintain individual websites, or I guess across the board, the websites. Uh, or when you dig into an actual website, you can grant access at that point to say, maybe they have access to work in a dev environment or a multi-dev environment, but they don't have the ability to actually deploy. So maybe you have contractors that you want to work in a particular place, but you don't want them to deploy to live without you kind of going, accepting that work. Uh, that's something you can do just with a click. When they're done with the project or when you don't want them to have access anymore, you just click and remove, and that's it. You don't have to worry that they're still gonna continue to be able to get in. The next workflow, launching a website, and kind of the sec consecutive deployments. All right, so from uh, a quote here from White Fuse Media, now we can tell our clients, whenever you're ready, give us half a day's notice and we'll get the site launched for you. So ag again, speaking from my agency experience from before Pantheon, uh, when the time came to launch a website, we needed a pretty significant amount of lead time. You know, we needed to know uh, in advance when they're gonna go live because we need to get the, all of the stuff ready on their server or whatever hosting environment they're using. We need to get it off of our own development environment, migrate it over, configure it, test it. You know, it would take days to get everything ready to go before we could actually feel confident enough to change the DNS over and actually point traffic to the website. Uh, the cool thing about Pantheon is that it's easy. You know, if you're using the dev test and live environments and you have all these things set up, what you see in your live you know, sandbox URL is what you're gonna see when the website goes live. So uh, as the agency I worked for before Pantheon switched from doing our own thing on Linode, uh, doing our own sort of uh, um, VM thing uh, to using Pantheon, uh, we, we could just say, okay, when do you wanna go live? Tomorrow? Okay, no big deal, let's just, let's change your DNS, and when you do, it's gonna look just like this website. You know, here's the URL, take a look, looks good, great, change it, it's done. You don't have to worry about uh, kind of maintaining these environments or migrating or anything like that. 
All right, the next workflow, applying core updates, so Drupal core. Here's a quote from Justin Wellman from In Resonance. From a support perspective, we can use the dev environment to test and explore issues that arise. We've easily saved two to three hours a day just, at that, just in that piece. Uh, so again, the, the agency I worked for before Pantheon, uh, we did a lot of support. Uh, we had clients that we had built websites for that we maintained for several years, and it was our job and responsibility to apply these security updates to Drupal core and to modules as quickly as possible, uh, while still doing testing to make sure that they're not gonna break anything. Uh, so before this, we had to go through a pretty lengthy process. You know, each update might require hours of work to QA, to set up the environments correctly, to apply them, to do backups and all these things. Uh, and, and in Pantheon, it's just a click. Uh, it's, it's literally, you, you get a notification in the dashboard whenever there's an update. Uh, your backups are set up automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. You click to apply the update in dev, you review it, and if everything looks good, you deploy it to test. Uh, at that point, you could also set up maybe automated updates and test to do like load testing or visual regression testing or other things to test QA the website to make sure it's gonna work okay. And then click deploy it to your live environment and you're ready to go. It meant that we could go from taking hours to deploy uh, the, the, the security updates for a, a website to being just to do it in maybe an hour or less for each website. Uh, eventually, uh, we actually moved even from that to using Pantheon's uh, developer tools, the command line interface, to actually automate the entire process. So uh, there's some, some scripts that you can uh, get from GitHub uh, based in, in uh, Pantheon that will actually use continuous integration tools like uh, CircleCI to um, on cron go out and check for updates. If there's an update available, spin up a multi-dev, so uh, spin up a branch, uh, apply the updates there, Let's test it there and make sure everything's working okay. Do you know, some beat hat tests. Let's do some visual regression tests to compare uh, that new environment to the live environment. If there's zero pixels different, if everything is identical on live or on live versus the, the multi-dev, the, the branch, then we feel pretty confident that nothing's gonna break. I mean, everything's still working in both places and the updates have been applied. So then we can automatically apply those up to dev, up to test, up to live, and feel really good about it. And it just happens behind the scenes. We don't have to, uh, so it went from us spending maybe uh, hours per site to do this to just getting a Slack notification that says, hey, there are these updates found, no, no pixel differences, no visual differences whatsoever, and we went ahead and applied it for you. So basically, we spent no time on updates now. They just happen automatically behind the scenes, which is pretty awesome. All right, uh, the next workflow Connecting continuous integration processes. So speaking of uh, things like Circle CI, uh, here's a, uh, a quote from a, one of the case studies that we did. Uh, so GSADI plans to use Quicksilver to automate their workflow, moving towards continuous integration and automated testing. Uh, so the, uh, the, the tools that I mentioned, that process I mentioned to, to perform updates can be completely automated using our command line tools like uh, Terminus. Uh, the previous quote also mentioned uh, Quicksilver, which is a tool that we have that lets you um, add in some scripts or some code that is executed for workflows in Pantheon. So say, um, let's say you're, you're currently using Drupal 8's really excellent configuration management system. You are exporting your configuration from code, um, which is great. You then deploy it up to a new environment. Uh, we can set up a Quicksilver script that automatically imports configuration every time that you deploy to a site. So you never have to go through the process of Drush, CEX to export, and then importing it you know, on every environment whenever you deploy it there, you just know I'm always gonna export my code, my configuration whenever it's ready to go. Every time I deploy that up to dev or test or live, just automatically import it so I don't even have to worry about it. Um, and that, that saves a ton of time. All right, the next workflow, notifying external systems about development progress. Uh, again, this is where the, the Quicksilver piece kind of comes in. Uh, but if we take a look at, uh, this is actually from New Relic. Um, so New Relic is our performance monitoring uh, integration that we have. Um, automatically, you are getting New Relic and it's, it's kind of testing your performance behind the scenes. Uh, but these little lines here, uh, those lines represent a commit or a, a particular deployment in the environment that you're working in. So what this means is, uh, um, you know, 
this might be a kind of a poor example because it's so choppy, but um, if you were seeing you know, maybe a day's worth of development and you have this graph that's showing this thing. So th there's a really great example that we've, uh, we've shown in the past where when we upgraded um, a particular site from maybe PHP whatever, PHP 5.6 or something to PHP 7, uh, it's like, okay, we're going, uh, we're going like, you know, performance is like up here and then there's a line where we made the change to PHP 7 because we, we deployed it in configuration with uh, Pantheon and then it dropped and it was like down here is the norm now. Um, being able to see that line, I mean we could have guessed where it happened, but seeing the line tells us, okay, this is where the change happened. Uh, of course, seeing that line would also, you could see if the opposite is true. If you deploy something and all of a sudden performance gets really, really bad, uh, you can tell, okay, it was this commit right here. Um, this is one of the things that you can do with Quicksilver. You can integrate with a third party tool and set up these APIs together so they're communicating. So one example is th these lines. Uh, another example is something like Slack. Maybe you want to get notified every time that someone deploys a, a change to the live environment, or every time that you spin up a multi-dev based on a JIRA ticket or something. Um, you can actually set it up so those will all communicate. Yeah, so these are our Quicksilver platform hooks. All right, so the next workflow is reorienting on a new project. Let me jump to the quote. Uh, so Lisa, here the quote is, uh, we couldn't have done this as easily as our old setup. Pantheon affords us the time and energy to focus on the growing company. Uh, so standardization really is the key here. Um, it, it's, it's really a pain to uh, context shift between different projects. You know, you're, you're working from this type of website to that type of website in this hosting environment versus that one. Or maybe this one requires some uh, pre-processing, so like SAS or, or something. Um, you have some sort of a builder happening. Or this one's using Compass, uh, I'm sorry, Composer, and that one's not. Uh, it, it can be really difficult to context shift for a developer uh, when you, we'd love to have a standard process that works every time. So by standardizing on Pantheon, everything is kind of set up for you in advance. And like I mentioned, even if you don't launch the website on Pantheon down the road, at least you have a you know, standardized process that makes it easy to work as a team. All right, so again, here are the 10 common workflows for, uh, for agencies that we've kind of worked really hard to solve. Um, yeah, so from here, I'd love to pass it back to you guys and see if you have any questions. Yeah, so, so it's New Relic APM Pro, so it's not their like, low tier, it's like the, the higher tier, and it comes included with every environment. So there's no limitations on number of sites or anything like that, it's just when you spin up a Pantheon website, every environment includes the, the connection to New Relic. Uh, so, so the question was, are, are, there, are there bigger companies that are making use of Pantheon? Yeah, so there's, there's lots of bigger companies using Pantheon. Uh, lots of big agencies that have hundreds or even a few that have thousands of, of employees who are using Pantheon because of, they know it's going to work the same every time. They know that they can have a standardized workflow that works across the board. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it, it's really made for um, kind of the, uh, like the, we, we, we try to make assumptions about what the average company or organization or website is going to need for a situation like this. And uh, we, we appreciate working with kind of the bigger agencies uh, because for most of their websites that they're going to be working with, it's, it's going to be just the average stuff. Uh, but we do also have enterprise tier uh, that's sort of not listed on our, uh, on our pricing page that includes whatever you need. So for example, patch.com, uh, the one I mentioned earlier with you know, terabytes of images and terabytes of video and things like that. Um, they didn't fit into our, even our, our highest standard, uh, you know, uh, self-serve plan. Uh, and so we were able to customize it. So like whatever they needed, whatever um, configuration they needed to work with the, that size of file or to uh, have that m much amount of traffic, uh, we have special customizations we can do and, and even special um, dedicated people specifically for them to, you know, to talk to if they have issues. So yeah, we, we work with 
any size website. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any follow-up questions, I'll be here. I'm also going back downstairs to the booth a little bit later, so feel free to ask any more questions you might have. Oh, and like I said, we do have the sort of back booth area behind our, our booth. Uh, we'd be happy to help you set up a new website or set up some workflows or see some of these things in action. <laughs>